How's it going guys? Today we're gonna go over morning glories. They're one of my favorite flowers to have in the garden. I grow them right over here in the vegetable garden on the trellis and it's what you walk through every single time to get into the vegetable garden. And they're one of my favorite flowers. I grow usually two different varieties. Last year I tried to go three and I didn't really love the third one that I grew but I loved the two that I did grow. So the two that I grow, first one is this one right here. This is Clark's Heavenly Blue. And then I also grow a Chocolate Morning Glory and that chocolate one is my favorite one for sure. The blue one just grows really fast and fills out the trellis and it gives it all of that life and the greenery and you get the blue blooms first and then the chocolate one really takes over. The chocolate ones are my favorite though because they are like this big around. They're like twice the size of the blue ones and they're so beautiful. So I have two of them right here and you can see the difference. You can see that one of them is heart shaped and one of them has a much longer leaf shape. There is a huge misconception when growing morning glories that people get it confused with bindweed. They're two totally different plants. They're related, but they're not the same plants at all. Yes, morning glories do grow like crazy, but they are not invasive. They're not hard to get rid of. Mor morning glories are one of the plants that it grows. It's gonna drop some seeds. And if you have a problem, you just pull the seeds up. It's really, really easy. Where bindweed is where the problem is. And that's what's growing on the side of the roads. It's growing in fields. It's also commonly known as field bindweed because that's where it grows is in fields. The root system on field bindweed can get anywhere from about four to five feet deep and about six feet wide. So the roots on it are absolutely massive. And when the roots get that massive, what happens is it spreads by rhizome. So it's growing under the ground and those roots are then going to push up new growth. And everywhere that that happens, a new little bindweed plant is going to be popping up. So say you pull one in your garden, well, you didn't get all the roots out. So just down the way, another one's gonna pop directly out. Whereas morning glories, they don't have that type of root system. They just grow from their roots. The roots don't grow um, rhizomes, so it's not going to be spreading and sending out little runners. It's just growing the one plant. It's gonna set some seed, it's gonna drop some seed. And say those seeds do sprout up, it's really easy to just pull them. I'll show you guys in a second how I take care of the morning glories that are actually in a very confined area from last year's morning glories. And there's a there's very few that actually pop up then there are flowers i end up saving probably two three four hundred seeds last year from the chocolate and the blue and i just mix them in a bowl and i keep the seeds because i love morning glories so much so i tend to grow them like this and i also just let whatever comes up naturally usually stay and i pick the ones that are in the pathway out of the um, pathway so that way i can just walk right through the bindweed is going to be super invasive though and you're not going to be able to get rid of it the only way to get rid of bindweed is either is by spraying it or by covering it. And when I say cover it, I mean you have to use the black um, ground cover, the plastic ground cover, and then you need to put like a foot of mulch. You need to put like a lot of mulch on top of that. And that needs to sit like that for years. There is almost no real good way to get rid of that bindweed except by spraying. But when you're spraying, you're spraying a broad spectrum herbicide is the only thing that takes care of it. So by spraying that, you're also gonna kill anything else that's in the area, which most of the time when bindweed does pop up, it's in a flower bed, it would be in like this area and it's gonna start growing up my rose or whatever it might be, which at that point, I just need to get on it and I need to pull it and I need to wear that plant out as, much as I possibly can so that way every time it sends up a little runner I rip it out as soon as possible. We don't really deal with it here in my area but when I was growing up up in paradise my family did deal with a lot. It was in the sidewalk, it was in the fields, it was everywhere up there and um, I really remember it being a big problem but they do look a lot like your common garden morning glory. They get the same shape flowers, they open up in the morning, they're absolutely beautiful, they're a white color, the flowers are about this big around, whereas the morning glory flowers can be about this big around to the chocolate ones that are about this big around, and it's beautiful. But you definitely don't want bindweed growing in your garden. Morning glory, super easy to control, bindweed not easy to control. So if you find packets, like this or online of morning glories, don't be scared. You can definitely grow them and they're not gonna take over your garden. 
when growing your morning glories though you want to make sure that you're planting them in an area that is a little bit more separate from a plant so i wouldn't want to grow this right next to this rose plant or even next to this willow tree it's going to grow up and it's going to get tight it's a vine and it is a very fast growing vine we use a cattle panel to grow the uh, morning glories up it was probably one of my favorite things in the garden once it really took off it's a little bit later to the game but it goes and it goes hard and it just pumped out flowers like crazy but growing this next to something that it can latch onto is really important but you want to make sure that it's not another plant because if you're growing it in a flower bed where there's other plants growing it's going to latch onto that and it's going to use that plant to grow up and it's going to just suffocate that plant it's going to kill it it's going to wind tightly and it's going to wind fast and just take it out so that's also another reason with like common bindweed it does the exact same thing so that's one of the biggest problems that people have with the field bindweed is it does the same thing where it grows up your plants but you rip it out, but it just shoots up another runner where this guy, you rip it out and you're not gonna deal with that problem again. So I really like to make sure to give these guys enough space. They have a really large trellis that they grow up there in a confined area. They are in the vegetable garden, but they are in a pathway area where there's nothing else around for them to grab onto. Say a random arm shoots off to the side, I just cut that arm off or I just weave it back into the trellis and it's really easy. So if you have an area that you can grow morning glories in, I highly recommend it. I start about six or seven of these from seed. That way I can really make sure that I do have them in my vegetable garden. I don't wanna rely on the seeds coming back because this year I think I probably had 20 of them that popped up. The year before I maybe had like seven or eight that popped up. This year would just happen to be a better year for them to pop up, but they're really easy to pull. Um, so I do grow some from seed and I'm probably gonna grow these also in the front yard this year. This one is the chocolate one and you can see, I can tell the difference because of the leaves. You can see how pointed these leaves are right here versus this one. Look at that, it's a heart-shaped leaf and who could hate a heart-shaped leaf in the garden? And the heart-shaped leaf one is the blue morning glory. So if you have room for it, if you have an area that is a little bit separate from some of your plants, um, I really do recommend growing morning glories. You will not be mad at yourself for doing this. It's not gonna take over your garden. It's not invasive like the bindweed is. And then bindweed is an absolute menace. So do I want all of these here in the walkway? No, absolutely not. But these guys are gonna be so incredibly easy to pull. And what is nice too is I can kind of tell which ones they are. So I can tell that these are the blue ones because of how heart-shaped the leaves are. But I don't want them here, but I want all of those ones there. So those are all gonna stay. And any of these that are a little further out in the walkway, they're so easy to pull. And that is how extensive the root system is on these. So, these ones don't spread by rhizome because they're not the typical bindweed. They are related to bindweed, but they're not bindweed. So these just get pulled out. And even though I didn't get all the roots on this guy here, there's not gonna be anything that comes back. So I just need to pull them and that's gonna be it. So should there be some more seeds in the ground, then I will pull those that pop up but for the most part, like this one, that's not too far away. I'm pro I'm not going to leave that. That's going to get pulled. But look, this guy's staying. This guy's staying. These ones are staying. And all of these are going to stay. And I'm going to let all of these just grow up this trellis. And this is the area that I grew them last year. And they got to the top and they did absolutely beautiful. There's a few of them in this bed. And I will come in and I'm, I'm going to pull those but I'm probably gonna leave those guys and let them just grow to the fence that way. This is the arch that I grow my morning glories up. It's just a cattle panel, just like I'm using right there for sweet peas. And I cut it in half and I zip tied them up to a point on the very top. It's only half a panel wide. So it could have been a whole panel wide and on both sides and that really would have been better. I just have it tied in with one T-post there and then I'm using the fence as another support. Sorry about Lola, she is somewhere. Right there, there she is. But this is what I use to grow my morning glories up and it really is totally filled by the end of the year. And I just keep this walking pathway clear and let these guys grow up on both sides.
So in short, are Morning Glories invasive? No, absolutely not. They're super easy to pull. That is it, these guys are all taken care of and I'm not gonna have them popping up in random places should they continue to pop up even more throughout this warm season. Um, as more seedlings emerge from the ground, it won't be a problem, I'll hand pull them. They're not gonna spread by rhizomes. These ones will only spread by seed. So yes, there was maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There was maybe 10 of them that showed up somewhere that I didn't want them to be and I just pulled them and you guys saw how big that plant was that I grew last year it was absolutely massive so the amount of flowers that that one produced and the amount of seeds that that one produced and the amount of seeds that it dropped for only having that few plants pop up somewhere I didn't want them it's really not that big of a deal they're not invasive they're not going to take over i don't grow them in areas that i want other things to grow they're really not that invasive they're not that scary um i know a lot of people think that once you have them you can't get rid of them but that is more the bindweed that you see the field bindweed that is not just your common garden morning glory so i really hope that you guys all get out there and try growing some morning glories this year i think that they're absolutely beautiful just making sure that you have a large enough structure for them to grow up is super important and the strength is the other thing because they were hefty plants um the trellis that i did have this one here i did end up where all those little sticks are coming out the end i did end up um attaching a piece of bamboo to all of that to make the trellis even longer and wider because i had so much weight on it and they were starting to grow that way that i it like hung down it was like a wall so i had to give it extra support and make it even taller so you really need um to give them enough room for them to be able to grow because they are going to do what they want to do um, they're going to be big and they're going to be very impactful but they're going to be one of the most beautiful things in the garden so that is going to be it for this video i hope that you guys enjoyed it i hope that you grow morning glories this year you won't regret it i promise they're such a beautiful flower and such an amazing performer in the garden also the amount of blooms that it pumps out is just absolutely amazing so thanks for hanging out with me today guys and i will see you in the next one bye